This is one of the oldest symbols we can find in the world. It and its variations go back to Cro-Magnon times at least and have been really found around the world in a much more modern time than 40,000 years BC in the Americas but the same symbol has been shown along with many others. This symbol signifies the sun. Quite often it's drawn just with a circle with a dot in the center of it and at the point that you can see that they added the line in the cross was at the point that astrotheology entered the situation. There are different depictions that you can find that look just like this are variations of which is like the sun. In fact, here's one from Mesopotamia that is the symbol of Ond. And here's one that looks extremely similar from the American Southwest. Here's a version from Greece and it has the sun rays going around the outside. It's not too difficult to see that these all indicate the sun Pre-Columbian Mexico still has the cross, circle, and lines. This is something that came about a long time ago and got passed from a people that had this astrotheological belief system to the rest of humanity in different ways. In fact, in a much more modern time, Nigeria has adopted something like this that looks like a zodiac. But if you'll look at the encircling point that goes on here, it's a snake that wraps around and eventually bites its own tail. And we've had this in other videos, but it's a sign of fertility in a way. But actually, it's also a symbol of these people having gone around the entire zodiac, our world, whichever way you want to look at it and eventually came around to begin fighting themselves as a snake biting his own tail. And did it take a whole procession of the Zodiac in 26,000 years? Well, it, it looks like it does go back at least that long, and that's the point that they were having this Ouroboros concept. You can find this concept kept in Greece and other places and stuff too after this point and it is a snake wrapped around or as they say in Conan two snakes coming together you can even find a representation of this in India now in this representation it looks a little odd to some people but it's also very much like Egyptian where it's a wrapping around a snake and this is supposed to be the world that you see there and in India, I did an old video about it, how it was, uh, they said the world was not stationed upon pillars, like it tries to say in the Bible, and we're in a snow globe, which was kind of what this thing looks like. But the back of the earth is actually a giant turtle. In fact, it goes turtles all the way down. Is that what it is? But this is also a layered thing of heaven because you can see that people are up there and there's this dome that's there and that's held up by elephants and so on. It's the same symbology. It kind of means the same thing. It doesn't hold the whole essences in it, but it also does show that snake worship and that snake concept that goes with that. You can find this in South America and in fact the mouth and symbol situation of a warrior type connected to these four points or four winds or whichever way you want to look at it here it has connectives the dragon symbology that's there the griffins and symbology that's there but there's more to this. If you look around the edge, there's also the symbolic celestial fire. These are a few concepts which have been shown to reach through all types of religion. Whether it's a primitive, primordial thing, 
here in North America that was going on in different stages with different people like North American Amerindians and Navajos having something and they had the same symbol as a people over in the Northeast that they had never run into before, supposedly. But there's a connective there. Strangely to interject it here, but uh, again, they have found that all the dogs that are in South America and Mexico and blending up into the Americas, the natural dog that they had here, domesticated and so on, all does come from a Viking Scandinavian type people, in fact, it matches. So the idea, they also found another place like Lawrence Meadows, which is more down deep in Nova Scotia. And this lends to the belief that there were a people that came across here at that time. Now, they don't want to believe that it ever happened before. But of course, we've got a pre-Clovis people, even here in Texas at 18,000 B.C., repeatedly found. It's not like there's this one thing. And others that connect to a Salutrian people, which again are a Cro-Magnon type that were living on the uh, eastern uh, or western edge of what we call Europe or Britain today. And their artifacts are found in the Americas, but they don't, they don't want to really boost and boast this out. For some reason, they got caught in this idea that Clovis first and these people came up, uh, upon like 9,000 BC, whenever this land bridge exactly made it. And then they figured all about the land bridge and everything. And after they did, they, f oh, whoops, here's people that were here twice that old now. In fact, there's uh, evidence of habitation that's uh, in uh, Mexico and Central America that they found that uh, was like 32,000 BC to 38, possibly, on some of the tests. Even carbon dating and stuff, and, and uh, repeatedly done well before they decide to mention any of it. The symbol of the zodiac that we look at and talk about in a lot of these videos that I've put out recently on astrotheology also can be seen in what we would think of nowadays as an Asian, which Asia was Caucasians, and Oriental beliefs that were spread through through a person known as Buddha, and I've shown repeatedly that there is a blue-eyed form of Buddha, in fact, of his great things and showings of a great man. There's one that's listed as a man with blue eyes. That's one of the check marks that you have to check off to be a great man. People want to mull that over a lot and then all these statues and stuff. But this also symbology that goes along with it, whether it has a different names for people, just like different religions right around the Crotal Crescent had different names for the exact same things and planets and so on. Strangely, as I've shown with storm god videos and all this other things that uh, there's connections to that because the people are somehow strangely in the same place and then they do the same thing now somebody who was into statistics and all kinds of things like that and found out about this and got marveled by it figured out that after you do a couple of these with one religion to another this adds up to being well over one in a million chance that it's possible. And if you add one more onto it, it becomes a number that reaches past the moon or something. And then whenever you find something like 27 connections, then it's like just you get a funny look. Let's just say it that way. But these same people were the people that came into India and in the Orient in ancient times. It's the reason pyramids are in what we call China today. Let's not drift too far off of that from looking at this, but if you look at these angel type effects here that seem to be caught in a shell or something like that, and the Buddha representative, it's not too hard to understand the concept and where it comes from, but then again, he is the sun. So, 
Jesus is the sun. He's always shown with this iconography. People are probably well familiar with these depictions that are shown here, and they don't get it whenever they look at these things that really the artists back then, all kinds of people knew the sacred truth and where this comes from and things, they put it in their art. People talk about Michelangelo and the Last Supper and he has these things. No, 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 no. It, it's all over the place. In fact, you would say mainly that this is depictions that are constant and mainly instead of, you know, infrequently. It happens constantly in the same situation, showing you this concept in a halo, and they don't get the idea, but they're trying to put things together, and, you know, um, they show this symbology, and for those, you know, with e ears to hear and eyes to see, they understand it in a different way that other people don't get it. They just go, yeah, he was glowing like, had, like uh, you know, he's got this glow around him or something. And that's not what the idea is. Here, walk outside for a minute. You know, you can't look upon the face of God, right? Yeah, you, you can't. Remember Moses had to look away and all these weird things? Well, that was a sunset and seeing the last glimpse of the sun, and you can really finally see it then. But let's uh, focus on this. Come out here outside, and then come out here. Uh, yeah, out over here. Yeah, it's kind of hot today. Take a look up there. Oh, yeah, we all look away. We can't look upon the face of God. It's almost like when Gandalf shows back up. It's Gandalf the White. That he's been reborn in another way. Hey, there's a connection. Let's go on. Let's go back inside and set the AC. So hopefully you can see these connections and stuff. By the way, I'm kifing some video here from Zeitgeist and another project that they have connected with that here. And it's been mulled together by somebody else and I'm taking it and piecing it together and talking over it. But um, here you are with a sacred hand gesture. And, you know, that was supposed to have been the book of life that he was holding there, but or the Bible in your mind, right? Yeah, Jesus, there wasn't a Bible then. So, no, what is this? Oh, it was the Jewish thing. No, those were all on scrolls. There weren't any books. But there was a tablet in the sky. That's that's in an astrotheological video that I just did recently and shows you the square of Pegasus and how that works out. The Mountain of the Gods. This is nothing really unique whenever you start looking at different concepts that people have and they start showing stuff. And this pinnacle situation that goes on here, wow, that's bright. The pinnacle situation that goes on here, you can find in Egypt. And you can find it in the Celtic cross. In fact, the swirls that have been shown here have been found in the Americas and a few other places. And it, it's actually a drawn and connective that it at least goes back some 16 to 20,000 years in a drawing and a concept and then when you, where you see the areas that it goes through and who's connected to it but they want to disconnect each one they're like oh this is a different people and everything well you because it's thousands of years of difference but there's a symbol just like the swastika and this cross type concept that's been kept for a long time But it keeps going on, so we show Egypt and the Celtic cross, but then you know the Rosicrucian cross and the one we're familiar with, but there's actually depictions in Native America, and I know one of these people actually looks like they're holding their arms up like wings, and they meek in the very top whenever they do this thing that's drawn that if somebody tries to put on a suit, they can't quite pull off. But this is, again... A thing in their story about this like whenever the hula dancers do a hula with a story and that story is about the Sun and the changing of season this is what this whole little dance was about if it's the one I'm thinking of and I think that it is but it's connected with birds and the early Christian cross was 
something quite different, but we're familiar with this one, right? We're real familiar with this one. In fact, you always see it on the top of a staff. You see these people going around with this idea on the top of a staff and everybody tells you that this is, oh, let's see, that's the cross or something and everything. No, that's a staff, just like magic. And on the end of a staff, just like Gandalf, there's like a jewel or something in it that makes it magic. Well, on the end of this is this fantastic jewel, degraded in different ways and stuff. And this is actually a zodiac symbol and stuff, but actually, the Egyptians used and other people such as Mesopotamians and ancient Anatolians and we're not sure if they didn't use something like this going way back when with sticks and stuff which didn't last of course but you can use that as a plumb bob by leaning it down and leaning it up. And if somebody has used the degrees and made a circle of it and a sphere and 360 degrees like we use today and still do. And this just comes back from the ancient Sumerians. That's where we get it from based on 12s and all of that. Which we'll get into here later. But you can lean it over and you can get ideas and declamations of angles and things like that. And if you've ever done any carpentry and you use a thing called a square and it's got all the declamations on that, that's just one piece with all the information like this put onto it. In fact, using that flat wall of the cross, it's holding up the circle right there as that boundary. And then the board is the other part. And then you kick it at angles if you follow me in any way situation. And any, anyhow. We're familiar with this idea though. And so there are graveyards that are full of them. What's weird is some of these places predate the point that Christianity was really supposed to take over in the places. And we found symbols of these ideas and connectives that go back before that and for different people and so on. And ones that we nowadays claim that have no connections to Christianity, but if you look at it in this spinning slow wheel of the sky here, going round and around, looks a lot like a wheel. These people that also brought the wheel had this concept, but again, we talk about how we can go back tens of thousands of years and here we go again with that coincidence times this times this equals one in a million. And then if you find another one, they're like, it's, that's impossible. But you find this squatter man or whatever you want to call it. People try to connect it to plasma energy, all these different things that are going on here. But it's Arizona, Armenia, Guyana, New Mexico, all around the planet these markings are chipped into it and we're getting wild variations on ages that people try to give to this but of course here's the problem folks we keep trying to associate something with the biblical idea because everybody wants this concept that we didn't have anything going on before 6,000 years ago or around 4,000 BC and that's because the same cities or whatever and the start of everything and writing and all of that comes on strong right there. So we can prove that point. In fact, it looked to the people at the time, way back when, looking at history, that that's pretty much when it ended. So before that, a certain amount of time, that must have been it. And there's your biblical idea. The odd concept is yeah something amazing did happen right there and kick it all in so you get that idea and we see it somehow in the archaeological record yet we look back now and we have all these things in between and these people with terrazzo concrete floors and all of these other situations leading back to Gobekli Tepe looking like they were not ugh at that point but they already had this astro theological circle situation going on it's like Stonehenge but they have like 30 of them or more they've only undug a small portion of it so their estimates but who knows under the other parts of it there might be a circle surrounded by living areas and people lived around this one and this one and this one and then all these other ones buried on purpose 
but this symbol here goes back well before that but you can find it in Australia you can find it all over the Middle East and in the ancient Orient they have found it on islands so noting that these people must have been a seafaring people at one certain point or you're back at the middle of the last ice age when they're doing it and then yet some of these islands show that they must have been seafarers at that time just like they've proven well they don't want to give Cro-Magnon any credit and then nowadays we find out Cro-Magnon is still extant here today they got the DNA out of one of them that's 30,000 years ago from Paglisi Cave and it's still here today it's R and from that becomes all kinds of different ones well uh, sorry it it, it contains N and we realize genetically now which ones come downstream from that point but the point of the 30,000 year old guy is like well oh, he's still here today that's something just like that kind of strange when you put it all together but let's try to get through this thing here Again, I'm using some footage from Zeitgeist and this other place, but so this concept of a zodiac, well, how long has this been around? And people are not lying to you whenever they tell you that the ancient Egyptians had one right there at the very end, and the Ptolemaic dynasties utilized one and so on. But they are lying to you in a way that, of omission because they're not telling you usually and anything that you find that actually they're utilizing this all the way through from the earliest point that we can find and there are connections to Jesus and all kinds of things that go along with this a couple of recent vids I found somebody who had some pictures that they're using of the Sumerian one and it's uh, a guy named McHugh and he has figured out a lot of this from being able to compile a couple of things together that are somewhat unique and I could have myself gone down the same road I kinda did but I took a left um, but he studies ancient Sumerians and how different parts of words he's gotten so good at he got to the point where he knows different parts of words are sublatives and other parts of words and we still use this today where a lot of words are conglomerate words well that conglomerate word by its association with other words and what it means can give you a myriad of different words using that same portion that's an odd way to say it I guess but uh, in reality some th something like mool which would mean star has like eight meanings to it and can be utilized in different ways now we figured out finally through all of this that about half of those are talking about constellations at least and I would tell you it's more than half but still a lot of people don't know this astro theology like I've been showing you where the Sumerians have a different zodiac but some of it's the same and the strange thing is, is some of the strange things that are said about the things that go around our zodiac, and even in uh, uh, astro uh, astronomy where people are trying to, you know, what day were you born on and tell you all this type of stuff, some of the stuff that's in the knowledge in that, believe it or not, like tarot cards too, actually comes off from this ancient knowledge that goes from way back when. And it even doesn't make any sense so much there. But if you take it and you go, well, here's the Sumerian ones for the same thing. Then all of a sudden you go, oh, because it seems to make more sense there. Well, that's where they get it from. And secondary forms of words. It's a strange thing. Let's continue. But there's that cross that's right there that we've been talking about and that people adore today for a certain reason. And that's the sun in the middle of the zodiac. There it is. And they know even back then when they're first doing it that here's the earth and here's the going around it. And they show the moon too, right? 
Now what's not shown here is the fact that, well, that's pretty much a full moon whenever we're looking at it, if, they're, if we're in conjunction in this position, right? But day and night is because the Earth's here and we spin around and around. They knew the Earth was a circle a long time ago. I mean, you can go back to 360 degrees we talked about, but slowly but surely, this right here is there, but this is just kind of a, oh, a little symbol of the knowledge of all of that. And there's that staff again. Yeah, you're familiar with this, but you can use that same object, amazingly, to plumb and do the pyramids and things like that. And you see it all across churches. It's like crazy. The same symbol. And what it originally meant. And who were these people that had this? I mean, this is something that you can see behind Jesus. Like somebody is there putting the staff behind Jesus and going, look. But at the same time, you're supposed to easily get the idea, well, if that was a sun symbol, and this, that, and the other, Jesus is in front of the sun symbol. No, he is the sun. God created the whole cosmos. Nowadays, we could probably make more sense of it than they could have back then because they thought the earth was covered with this blanket and they didn't realize how far the stars were away, but they knew they were way farther, another layer level. And also the planets were at certain levels away from us and they get the nine levels of hell and heaven and all of that that we've talked about before. But in doing so, they didn't realize the breadth of it all. You know, once we realized that we were in a, in a solar system, but that's only a little speck that you would just see as our sun is one little glowing dot in billions of stars swirling around, apparently a black hole that we have in front of us and everything, and we're all in this one big O thing, so it's not this layer. The Bible tries to get you under an idea of, but it's a much deeper layer. And then we figure out, oh, you know, some of these smudges, there's those the galaxies too. In fact, there's millions of them. And then we get a good telescope and Hubble and stuff and just point it off at nothing. And we realize, oh my gosh, there's billions of them. And then somebody took that idea that said, well, that part that we looked at, that you see the cool shot where it's just full of thousands and galaxies and looking back through time and all those ideas. Well, that's just one nothing in our sky that was in between anything just to see if they could find something, right? If you look into it. And in doing so, they found all of those. And somebody said, well, if we only have half the amount that that shows, like we got lucky. And then we times that towards a round over here. The number becomes something we don't have a name for. It goes way past Google. It ends up being one of those numbers with symbols next to it and shit and to the sixth power of whatever. It's incredible. Let's just continue with this sun symbology because here it is in the zodiac. And you know, you can look at all kinds of ancient stuff coming up all the way through the great cathedral. So this was not something that was like, oh, maybe that first Christ was like this and it changed. It was something that even the painters, the people making the stained glass, the masons, everybody knew from way back when. It tried to get choked out. Oh, it tried real hard to get choked out through the dark ages and all the things that happened there. And the Inquisitions and all the things that's like that. Oh, we'll get to that in a minute here again and talk about it. But as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Jesus tries to tell you, it, it, it's kind of funny, but like 37 times he claims he is the son of God. Well, God would have caused the big bang, right? God sneezed, caused the big bang. Now you want to go with that. You're going to change totally what the Bible had an idea, but it kind of fits. We're going to make a new religion out of that. Better write a new book because that doesn't say that. But it says that he's the son. But then all of these suns are stars that we see would actually be that. 
You know, astrotheology isn't unique in any way. Kind of the way, I, the reason I like that I didn't go deep into the Bible, I left it set aside and didn't want to attack it till well after studying all of these other people and stuff, was that whenever I jumped into that, I instantly started seeing stuff like this. And of course, I stand on the back of giants. I find different things that uh, people have gone, oh yeah, you think it's just that, but here, boom, and shows you a whole garden instead of one flower that looks pretty. And you're like, what? And th that makes connections. In fact, a few of those instances there makes another connection to something you already know from other people, and it just starts to make a spider web, as I've talked about before. Corinthians. The glory of God is the light of knowledge. They always talk about light. Light means smart. Dark means dumb. You know, well, you're unknowing about what goes on at night. You can't see well. This goes back before, like, this goes back to Ugg. This goes back to the shrew thing that we came from somehow. And during the day and during the night. I would guess that that creature wasn't so nocturnal. How about that? But there are variation on variation on variation showing you that this is trying to say that I'm the sun. Here I am. I'm the sun. It would be easier. Oh, I forget who was that said it years ago. It's a quote, and I've heard other people quote it too, and I will now too, somewhat, or paraphrase it. If you would just take the Bible and every place that it said, Son of God, S O N, just change that to S U N, and you'll pretty much have it down. In fact, you'll have a better idea of what they're trying to talk about in the first place. So this crown of thorns idea, that's just amazing. And that makes different connections. You know, there's supposed to have been this King Isis of Edessa. And he had a crown of thorns. But I believe that he's one of the heretics that the Romans called out. In fact, I believe that he helped fund it somewhat from a distance. Because Edessa is over here by the Euphrates and stuff over here. But um, whenever you look at his coins it's also got like little spikes all over it and stuff it doesn't really look like a regular crown does which just got spikes all over it but it's quite different and uh it almost looks like a thorny cap to where if anybody ran into it you know like people have those studs all over them whenever they're in heavy heavy metal and you're like you don't want to run into that well it's that kind of concept but uh i think he had something to do with it and he was also probably the Isis that they talk about in Josephus where they found them. This is at the end of the Roman conquest too, by the way, which makes a total connective and Titus's campaign actually mocks or mimics or follows exactly Jesus all the way through. In fact, there are little things that are said about it that are comparative to what Jesus says and or what's going on at the time and in order. Look up Flavian signature. It'll give you a realization of that, but that's not what it's all about. It, there's astrotheology. There's this, that, and the other. There's woven in tales of the Greeks because they helped found it and the Septuagint and all the things there, but it's, it's an amazing book. It really is. But this kind of shows you its roots and the engine that drove those religions and what they came up with. And this is not something new. It goes well back into the last ice age, as we've shown here, but we're coming out of that. One thing I didn't show in here is real important that they already had the idea of Taurus the bull and Orion and so on. And you can verify it because, again, in one of these caves that I actually show you a piece of at the very start of the video, um, cave art like that, where they've shown that the cave art is made from dot to dot all over it, and then they drew it in, like they gave it the form, and then they drew it all in. Well, that dot to dot 
is the outline and the stars of Taurus and everybody's got that. In fact, the bullseye is the bullseye and so on. But then even more amazing, somebody else figured out whenever they laid it out on graph paper and how the cave goes and all that stuff and where north is and stuff. And somebody finally looked and they go, you know, whenever it shows Taurus and Orion, there's a certain time of year, right? Whenever it gets flipped up to that point, it would, if the wall was see-through right then or made out of glass, that's where the stars would be. I mean, real close. It's amazing if somebody was going to be able to stand outside the cave and look at it and then run in and then try to get some idea of their bearing and then put it on the wall. In fact, that band that's on the wall kind of mimics the Milky Way. It's incredible. Let's just continue, though. So, it's pretty easy to see <coughs> that constellations definitely fall in. In fact, here's a whale constellation right here. You can see how you'd make a whale out of it. And then there's the tail right there where the person is standing. But that's also Bethlehem. Notice that. This is the house. This is in the skies. And as above, so below, if you will. But this is the house of bread, which is what this means. And it's written in the stars. Yeah, yeah. And quite often, Pegasus' square can be used towards different things. And, you know, so during summer, here's something I've shown quite a few times. During summer and then fall and then the winter, the sun starts to fall more and more in a southerly path. This is actually where the earth is leaning back due to its rotation here. And the sun isn't doing this, actually but we are in relation to the sun and it starts to be summer. It passes the equator and you know, the Tropic of Trapicorn, Tropic of Cancer, that's the median area of where it's maximum summer, like the longest day of the year in the Northern hemisphere. And then on the Southern hemisphere, it's the other one. And it becomes summer down there while it's winter up here and vice versa, i.e. Australia is in the middle of summer whenever we have Christmas. Yeah, it's funny, you watch it whenever you see it sometimes, they'll have a Christmas celebration and they're all out on the beaches and stuff and everything and you're like, yeah, I wish you were here, mate. Um, but it falls farther and farther and this creates fall and fall goes into winter and this is the sign of death. And it, December, you know, the start of December, it really gets lower and lower in the sky and gets lower and lower in the sky until December 21st, it stops and it no longer goes lower and it no longer goes south in the representation that we see. And so on the 22nd, it's said to have died and three days later, it's going to rise again. But there's a little more to it and everything. And it almost makes it to where, like, I've heard that someplace before. Hold, hold on. And then we'll go to part two on this and so on. It'll be in your top left-hand corner coming up. But the sun stops or dies symbolically for three days. And then on December 21st, uh, 25th, three days later, it rises again. Now where this is, is on or near the Southern Cross constellation that's down there. And so on December 25th, it starts to rise again and go back north, if you will, when it's been traveling south. And so we have this idea that the sun is on, cro on the cross. This son of God is on the cross. And then he rose and he went up into the heavens to save us all so we could have spring again and go through our summer. This whole connection, you know, connects to theology that's actually about agriculture and connections that you can see over here at the left. And all of these sun gods all kick around this same time. And in fact, I've made a video and others have before too. In fact, this is Ike guys goes way into it, but this is, that's pretty much clipped out of it. 
understand that rising and dying gods, which are especially connected to sun gods, always seem to die at this winter solstice time. And the sun does too at the same time, so it just makes sense. Here's the Statue of Liberty over here. No wait, that's Addis. No wait, that's Saul Invictus. No wait, that's Jesus with the beams over him. No wait, that's Horus with it on the top of his head. No wait. You know, right up here on top of that, that's Dionysus. It says it right here on it. Here's Dionysus dying on a cross. You know what the apologetics? Look at that. That's Jesus dying on a cross. These seafaring people, though, have a connective that works with that, and there's also something about that. I may, may do another separate video that show a connection to this. I did one not too long ago. You all recognize that right there in the uh, Pagan Jesus. And a guy wrote a book, and it's actually on the front of the book. But that's Dionysus. And it looks just like Jesus hanging on a cross and everything. But Dionysus has water to wine and all these connectives too. And the apologetic for that is, no, 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 no. That's not at all it. That's, see, that's nothing like the Jesus thing because that's an anchor. Because it's got a little hoop below it which could be the moon, and he is the sun, and this is a partial eclipse that supposedly happened when this all happened. But you know, in Caesar, they said that that happened too, and the sky went dark, and all these things happened, just like they tried to say in Jesus, only in one of the apostles, though, if I'm correct. We're going to go to part two now. It's going to be in your top left-hand corner. Let's start with the next picture here, and we'll come back to it for the Son of God is shown here, rising back up. And so what the ancients used to say, the Son of God died on the cross on December 21st, and three days later it rose again to save all mankind. I swear that sounds familiar. Oh, you can twist it around in the spring idea. We're about to get to the spring idea here in just a minute. Top left-hand corner, part two. Peace.